All right, so I wanted to talk through a quick app that I made with Lovable, um, just to kind of go through some of the different things that you can do. Um, and a lot of this was kind of surprising to me because I think even a couple months ago, you couldn't do a lot of this. So here's just a simple landing page. Um, uh, I can go through a different video of how I created kind of these animated uh, components, um, but I was pretty happy with how those came out. Um, and it takes a while to kind of get the right styling or design, but once you kind of figure out um, how to how to prompt Lovable, you can get some uh, pretty great front-end designs, I would say, uh, better than Cursor or some of the other tools I've used. All right, so uh, this also has user auth fully set up. I can log in with Google uh, or just uh, any email. So let's just showcase that. Um, and basically to set up user auth, at least as far as I'm aware, you do have to uh, integrate with uh, Superbase. Um, so uh, it's, it's not too hard to do. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory, but you just have to create a Superbase account and connect it. Uh, and I can show you what that looks like over here. So here's the, the uh, Superbase project. Um, and Superbase is basically just like a way to kind of simplify managing the, the back end. So all your tables will be here, which is pretty cool. Um, you can manage them, you can do insertions, you can run uh, custom SQL queries to make changes. Um, and I found it to be, I don't know, I'm, I'm definitely not super technical and <clears throat> doing things through Superbase is, is, uh, has been really easy. Um, uh, all right. So I've set up auth, and again, can do more videos going into more depth on, on this stuff. The other thing that I've sent, set up is the ability to um, basically purchase uh, tokens. Um, and I've set that up with a Stripe integration, um, and that's just via the Superbase Edge function. So to connect with Stripe, uh, at least I've found you need, to, you need a, um, uh, a checkout session edge function and then a, a webhook to know when that checkout session is successfully completed. Um, so basically, the first one will connect you to the Stripe checkout um, to, to enable people to check out. And then you have to you know input your uh, Stripe uh, API keys and secrets. And then the webhook will be something that Stripe sends to us to tell us that someone successfully uh, checked out so that we know um, to give them credit for that. So in this case, the, the purchase is to, to buy tokens. So when they buy a certain amount of tokens, there is a function that will tell us that they made that purchase. Um, great, so the other thing to, I wanted to show off is uh, through edge functions, um, have been able to integrate uh, something called Open Router. So Open Router is kind of like a central API for, as far as I can tell, all the models that you can access via API. So these are just four that I've chosen, but essentially uh, you can actually just go to the open router website. Um, you can pretty much integrate with any of the models that they have available here, um, which seem to be uh, pretty extensive. Um, they also have like different rankings. Uh, and this was just really cool because just one API. So I can uh, show that here. So that's the, the stream uh, edge function. Um, and this, they also support pretty much all the the things that like the OpenAI API does. So streaming, audio, um, web search. Uh, I found it to be really cool. So I can also show you what that looks like in the code. We can go over here to functions, stream chat. Um, so that's the... Um, method to integrate the different models. Uh, the other thing which I wanted to showcase uh, using that is um, the ability to uh, run prompts against uh, a couple different models at the same time. Um, so let me just pick a good uh, one. Let's see. Well, let's, let's look at the prompt library. Uh, product one pager. No, that's just a placeholder. Another placeholder. OK. Um, so I'll use something that I actually use in one of my other projects. We'll go here. Let's do JSON converter. So I was looking for, I want to prompt uh, 
for an LLM that will convert um, uh, text into a JSON for something else that I'm working on. Um, and I wasn't sure who would create the uh, best prompt for that. So with this tool, I can actually just select the different models I want to test it against, and it will run the same prompt uh, across those different selected models. But something I like to do is have uh, one model evaluate all the responses and then help you figure out uh, which which model is actually doing the best job. So off screen, I'm just copy pasting these responses. Now we're gonna copy the three prompts. And then uh, I've been finding myself using Grok for a lot of things. I don't know why, but it just seems pretty well-rounded. So I'll say here are three prompts for a JSON for a text to JSON converter to create diagram JSON schema. Pick the best one and explain why. All right, let's so copy paste all that and then let's see what Grok thinks. So now it's evaluating the, the three prompts. I haven't told it which models uh, did which, and let's see, let's see if it has a favorite. Um, so Grok shows the third prompt, which was written by ChatGPT 4.5. So while it was the slowest, I have found that 4.5 tends to win out in these uh, prompt evals. Um, so worth considering, especially if you're thinking about you know a prompt that you're going to use uh, often. Um, 4.5 might be the best model. But anyways, that's a quick overview of this tool. You can uh, chat with different models, all from one chat. Um, you don't have to deal with different subscriptions. And then you also have the prompt studio, uh, the prompt creator, um, which just helps you uh, have a more structured framework for creating prompts. So you have um, sort of these basic sections, which I've found to be useful, and then a prompt library to kind of store all your prompts as you're building them out. Uh, and then you can also um, uh, call those prompts as a uh, variable here. Let's just do this one because. So you can see how that's working. But um, yeah, it took a while to kind of figure it out. But now that it's set up, um, it's pretty reliable uh, and it's available uh what's the actual url i think it's just available publicly yeah promptrepair.com um so check it out uh definitely still some bugs um some issues with like the routing where it like defaults back to the chat page but um overall yeah pretty fun project